Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devan County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 135. This is the Friday, March 10th, 2023 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Stormwatch by C.J. Box, the 23rd book in the Joe Pickett series. Joe and Nate might be on opposite sides for the first time. At number two, Never Never by Colleen Hoover and Taryn Fisher. Questions arise when a pair of lovers try to uncover why they suddenly became strangers. At number three, it starts with us, also by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number four, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, a scientist and single mother living in California in the 1960s, becomes a star on a TV cooking show. And at number five, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover, a battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week at number one, The Courage to be Free by Ron DeSantis. The Florida governor gives his account of his achievements and shares his opinions about the political left. At number two, Spare by Prince Harry. The Duke of Sussex details his struggles with the royal family, loss of his mother, service in the British Army, and marriage to Meghan Markle. At number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Besser van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number four, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. And at number five, Enchantment by Catherine May. The author of Wintering shares her journey to reconnect with her sense of wonder and awe. Our first recommended read for this week is the new Owen King novel, The Curator. King expands his 2014 short story of the same name with arresting results in this Victorian-esque fantasy that contains moments of both horror and humor. The offbeat tone is evident from the outset, as the novel's setting, a city nicknamed The Fairest, is described as jutting from the body of the country like a hangnail from a thumb. The Fairest is in turmoil following a popular revolt sparked in part by the callous shooting of a businessman by a government minister. In the wake of the government's collapse, Dora, a former servant, seeks to understand the meaning of her beloved brother's cryptic last words before he died of cholera. He said, yes, I see you, your face. To that end, she obtains a position in an occult research hub, the Museum of Physical Research, with the aid of her lover, Robert Barnes, an officer in the Rebels' Civil Defense Force. Her increasingly desperate efforts 
to ascertain what her brother meant, play out against the ongoing upheavals. King's creative world-building is admirable, and he makes even walk-on characters feel fully realized. Fans of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norvell will be especially enchanted. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. And this novel reminds me a little bit of the Netflix TV series Carnival Row, the second season of which has just come out. And that, of course, stars Orlando Bloom and is also a futuristic fantasy tale, sort of Victorian-esque. So if you haven't seen that and you like this book, you might check that out, Carnival Row, R-O-W, on Netflix. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Walter Mosley mystery, Every Man a King. The tendency of P.I. Joe King Oliver, a former New York City cop, to take on two cases at once, lands him in hot water in Edgar Winter Mosley's entertaining sequel to 2018's Down the River, Unto the Sea. When his grandmother's billionaire boyfriend asks him to look into the arrest and incarceration of an alt-right movement leader and race baiter, Joe doubts the validity of the charges, but is reluctant to become involved with a notorious bigot. Meanwhile, the husband of his ex-wife Monica has been arrested for selling heating oil as diesel fuel through connections to the Russian mob. And despite Monica's unpleasant combativeness, Joe agrees to investigate for the sake of his high school valedictorian daughter, Aja. Mosley's characteristic writing style is on full display, including his love of unusual similes, including the window gazed upon New Jersey, but it was a misty day, making the garden state look like a half-formed idea. Joe continues to fascinate as a protagonist, and the secondary characters enrich the story, whether they figure into the main action or not. While it may not quite measure up to his outstanding series opener, this is a worthy successor. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the first book in a series. It's called Deadly Harvest by Marissa Schruck. The audio is read by Jennifer Jill Aria. All Georgia Ray Winston wants is to fall in love. Life, of course, has other plans. Georgia's biggest challenge in the farming town of Wildcat Springs, Indiana, is figuring out how to win Evan Beckworth's heart. Until, because we knew there was going to be an until, until the day she discovers the body of a former student in the woods. She assumes it was an accident. When she starts to suspect it wasn't, it stirs memories of her father's murder nine years earlier. A murder never solved. Georgia refuses to let that happen this time. Not necessarily the wisest decision. As Georgia works with the Sheriff's Department's newest detective, Carl Perkins, she finds her heart slipping into his hands. But her head is pummeled with conflicting evidence and anonymous threats of severe consequences if she digs any deeper. In the end, Georgia faces a paralyzing choice. Ignore the dark secrets inside the family and friends who surround her, or be willing to risk her own life to uncover the truth. And by the way, that newest Sheriff's Department detective, his name is actually Cal Perkins, his cousin is Carl, you know, the guitar player in the band, 
who is playing down at the barn dance at the end of the block. Just a little bit of humor here. And I'm assuming most people know who Carl Perkins was. And if you don't know who Carl Perkins was, you're missing some wonderful music. So go to YouTube and type Carl Perkins Blue Suede Shoes and you'll get an idea. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new Julie Cherneda novel, To Each This World. This one is, as you might imagine from the title, fantasy. The audio is read by Megan Tussing. New Earth has been safe for centuries. In the protective embrace of their alien allies, the Kemet, who insist that all humans must remain on their planet. When they receive a message from a sleeper ship that was sent out before the Comet came to protect them, in quotation marks, the Comet spring into frenetic action to make sure that all humans are still on New Earth. But their methods make the humans question whether the safety the Comet have provided doesn't have a more sinister motive and whether they still have both the courage and the capacity to figure out the alien's agenda. A political story wrapped in a gigantic puzzle about communication, biological imperatives, and the dangers of ascribing similar motivations to very disparate species. This novel places three singular, unconventionally thinking individuals at the center of a vast and literally earth-shattering story. It explores the search for hope in spite of pragmatism and against all odds, and is centered on the willingness to sacrifice self for the possibility of any future at all. Verdict. This standalone from Aurora award-winning Trinada is highly recommended for sci-fi readers looking for hope punk in the midst of both alien and human conspiracies. And that's the Library Journal Review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which is found online at SSCL Tech, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Tibet County Library's YouTube channel. So for that, you just go to youtube.com and type in Southeast Tibet County Library, and then click on the video link. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the library on site and off for the week ahead of us. This time around, that's the week of March 13th through the 17th, 2023. Happy early St. Patrick's Day. Information about activities and events can also be found online. Just visit the library's website located at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. On a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which, of course, please just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library at area code 607-936-3713 or by just plain dropping by the library. On Monday, March 13th, we've got two programs to bring to your attention. The first, which is from 1 to 2 p.m., is an LSC author talk with David Epstein. For this program, you'll be joining best-selling author David Epstein as he chats about his most recent book, Range, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World. This program is held online. The link is on your screen. You can also go through the library's website to the calendar of events online if you want a clickable link instead of having to write down and type the one here. Then from 5.30 to 7 p.m., it's Crafting with Kimberly. This month, they're making fabric art pins. 
This program is being held at the library from 5.30 to 7 p.m. On Tuesday, March 14th, we have a whole host of programs at the library, kicking things off with coffee, tea, and English vocabulary from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. This is part of our series for adult learners of English, and this is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have story time with Miss Sue. This story time will be held in the children's department at the library, which is now relocated back to its home location on the first floor. And this story time will have Miss Sue offering an interactive story time that combines stories, books, songs, and play to promote learning. The suggested age range is for infants to three years of age. And then from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., we've got Coffee, Tea, and English Conversation, also a hybrid program, being held both at the library and via Zoom. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., it's the weekly SSCL Scrabble Club, which meets at the library. And moving on to our later afternoon programs, we have one, GATLAS, which runs from 3 to 4.30 p.m. GATLAS stands for Gay at the Library After School, and GATLAS offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. This program and series is open to anyone ages 11 through 18, which is grades 6 through 12, and held every Tuesday. GATLAS is a partnership program co-hosted by the library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. The program contacts for this program, there are two, Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, who is the host for the program, and the library contact, Kayla Crane, who is our head honcho of Young Adult Services here at the library. On Wednesday, March 15th, our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime, which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. This story time is recommended for kids ages three through six, and as with the previous story time, this one will too be held in the newly reopened children's section at the library on the first floor. Then from one to 3 p.m., we've got the weekly Mejong, which is a program and a gaming session, if you like, being held at the library. And then from three to 4.30 p.m., it's the weekly Atlas, ATLAS stands for At the Library After School, and the ATLAS program provides a relaxing environment to wind down after school, work on homework, play games, use library resources, and participate in guided makerspace projects. Registration is not required. Simply show up and join in. Moving on to our evening programs on Wednesday, March 15th, and actually we have one, it's the Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program being held both at the library in person and online via Zoom, unless there's inclement weather, and then occasionally it is held just online. It runs from 6 to 8 p.m., and if you'd like to join the group, you want to touch base with the head honcho of the program, the library's head of adult services, and our resident author, Michelle Wells. On Thursday, March 16th, we've got one program, it's the Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club, which is a hybrid program being held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. It runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. Moving on to Friday, March 17th, we've got four programs to bring to your attention. The first is March's Artful Storytime, which runs from 10 to 11 a.m. Artful Storytime is a weekly session of stories followed by arts and crafts, the program is designed for and open to preschool-aged children who are three to six years of age. This program is being held at the library. Then from noon to 1 p.m., it's March Artsy Kids. Artsy Kids is a three-week session of art, history, and painting. This program is designed for and open to homeschool children ages seven through 12. This program, too, is being held at the library. Then at 1 p.m., it's the debut of the latest edition of Library Connections, which you can access on Facebook, YouTube, and the Tech and Book Talk blog. On Friday afternoon at 4 p.m., we've got the Teen Dungeons and Dragons. The 
This program is being held at the library and is led by Dungeon Master Robin. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. Come to one or all gatherings. And here briefly are our library program's contacts. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.